Hi, everybody. It's Plus KP from Melbourne, Australia. Let me tell you, coming in from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, can't get bigger than this guest, Hal Lansky, right? Son of Bernard Lansky, one of the owners of the Lansky Brothers Closed Door. How are you today, Hal? I'm doing awesome, Plus. Nice to hear. Nice to hear your voice. Thank you. I haven't got that accent that you had, but I wish I had. And let me tell you, down there in Memphis, Tennessee, that's real Elvis country right there. Now, tell me a little bit about the store, how, when it actually started, and then we'll pick it up with Elvis. Okay, Plastic. So I want to introduce myself. I'm Hal Lansky. I'm second generation. We, we also have a third generation in the store, Julie Lansky. So the name of our store is Lansky Brothers. We're clothier to the king. This is our 76 years in business. We started in 1946. So the story goes, one day um, in the summer, uh, late summer of 1952, on famous Bill Street, my dad saw this young man looking in the window. And he invited this young man in the window. And this young man said to Mr. Lansky, Mr. Lansky, I don't have any money, but one of these days I'm going to go and buy you out. And Mr. Lansky said to this young man, you know, back then he was a nobody. He said, don't buy me out, just buy from me. And that's what started the friendship. You know, you know, Elvis, Elvis was so appreciative of my dad talking to him and inviting him in the store. Elvis really never forgot that. And they, they eventually became good friends. And around the corner from the famous store on Bill Street, uh, Elvis worked as an usher. He was an usher in a theater. And he got paid on Fridays. So he'd come in there, maybe one Friday, he might buy a shirt for $1.95. Next weekend, he might come in, buy a cap for 50 cents. Next weekend, he'd come in, maybe buy a shirt for, for $2, $2.95. And he eventually, eventually kept shopping and shopping. And then one day he came in, you know, a few years later, he came in, he said, Mr. Lansky, Mr. Lansky, I'm going to be on national TV. And my dad said, Elvis, that's great, that's great. What, what show are you going to be on? And he said, the Ed Sullivan Show. And my dad said, whoa, Elvis, that's unbelievable. You know, back then, um, Ed Sullivan Show was, was, was popular just like The Voice or America's Got Talent. It was a heavy show. And so uh, my dad, he said, Mr. Lansky, I'm going to need some clothes. And my dad started showing him clothes and putting the pants together with a sport coat. And then, then Elvis looked up to my dad. And he, said, he said, Mr. Lansky, I got a problem. And uh, my dad said, what's your problem? Elvis, and uh, Elvis said to my dad, Mr. Lansky, I don't have any money. My dad said, Elvis, you've got a problem, but i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you credit, but you better pay me back. So, um, you know, a couple weeks later, uh, September 9th, 1956, Elvis's first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. Um, you know, my dad, you know, back then, not a lot of people had, had TVs. They were black and white. And my dad, for the first time, saw this young man perform on TV. He's never seen him play before. He, he didn't know what the what he was doing. And at that time, my dad said, oh my God, this guy's dynamite. This guy is, is destined, destined for stardom. And, and, and after that happened, you know, Elvis couldn't really come in the store anymore. He was like a, he was like a goldfish in a, in, a little gold, in a little bowl. He couldn't leave Grayson. He couldn't walk on the streets. Everybody wanted a piece of him. They, they wanted to get close to this young man. And it, you know, it was unbelievable how fast he rose to stardom. And this all happened without Facebook and uh, Twitter and all that. It was unbelievable. Just think if he had Twitter and Facebook back there in the 50s. Oh, my God. It would have been unbelievable. Hey, I love the story. you got to keep going now because everyone's like really freaking out about this amazing story. So tell me how he got bigger and bigger and bought more clothes and what it was like at that particular time. Do you remember meeting him a few times? Oh, oh many times, many times. Uh, you know, I do have a, a photo in our, uh, this is our a coffee table book, our history of Lansky brothers. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of pictures uh, uh, Elvis in the store. And of course, there's a lot of lost moments when Elvis was in the store too, because in the fifties and sixties and early seventies, nobody had cameras. The only people had cameras were professional photographers. So there was a lot of lost moments, but, but Elvis shopped with us for three decades, the fifties, the sixties, the seventies. Um, we, the fifties is when, the Lansky look is uh, when Elvis looked his best in, in the 50s look. You know, Elvis was young and innocent. The 60s, when he got out of the army, you know, he, he was wearing the sharp uh, trim cut continental suits. And then in the middle of the 60s, he, you know, the Carnaby look, uh, the mod look came in from, uh, from London. And everybody was wearing the, the, the balloon sleeve shirts, the velvet uh, paisley uh, combinations, uh, uh, 
uh, big uh, wide bell bottoms. And in the 60s was a famous, uh, was, was a great uh, dec decade of fashion. And then the 70s, the last decade he shopped with us is, uh, is, a, is a decade of fashion we hope never comes back because in the, in the 70s, everybody thought they were pimps. You know, they dressed like the guys on the street, the long coats, the pimp hats. And uh, we were probably the only store in America that had a full-time furrier putting mink collars, mink cuffs, mink caps on everybody. And, uh, you know, Elvis, Elvis loved that look. A lot of his famous pictures as he was wearing the long coats with the, with the fur collars. But, uh, you know, Elvis loved, the, loved, loved fashion. My dad said he would, he would rather, you know, shop and, and, and look, look good in clothes. Uh, he, he loved, he was a clothes horse. Elvis was a clothes horse. I've seen so many pictures of Elvis in the Lansky clothes store that are just amazing capturing that period of time. Hal, can you show that book one more time? Show the cover, and I want you to tell yeah. everybody where they can buy it. That is a fantastic book. Just hold that up a bit more higher. Yeah. That's well, it. Uh, now tell uh, everybody where they can get that book. That's amazing. Well, we have a website, Lansky, L-A-N-S-K-Y-B-R-O-S.com, LanskyBros.com. If you see this, this photo, uh, uh, plastic. We we like to, my dad uh, likes to take credit for flipping Elvis collars. He flipped his collars. You know that was a cool look. Not everybody flipped his collar. And we also like to take credit for the black and pink color combinations of the fifties. You know back then men did not wear pink. Everybody thought he was a little maybe a little feminine because he's wearing pink. And all the guys wanted to beat Elvis up. They wanted to beat him up. But the real reason they wanted to beat Elvis up was because Elvis was stealing all their girlfriends. All the girls wanted to hang out with Elvis. So that's what was making all the, all the guys jealous. But uh, there's so many, Elvis was such a, a trendsetter. I mean, he could, he could put on anything and, and look awesome. At it. He, he loved to mix the, the patterns, uh, the stripes with the plaids. As long as the colors there, he, Elvis loved it. And, and he, he could really rock, rock his clothing. I can't get over that 50s look. Can I? Can you just open up one of the pages there and show us one of your favorite photos in that book? Okay. Well, let me. It's uh, just like the coolest book, isn't it? Yeah. So, so I don't know if you can see this. Uh, yeah, uh, we see it perfect. Just lift it up. Okay. Yeah. Right here. This is. Can you see that? That's you. Yeah. You know, a lot of people ask me if I ever met met Elvis, and the answer is yes. Uh, do I remember this photo? The answer is no. But Elvis was in the store a lot of times. But but nobody had cameras back then, and uh, of course, if you notice Elvis's uh, left hand on my shoulder, uh, that's uh, that's something that people would 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 die die for. Just to, to, to what an Elvis amazing photo! Part. Now you got to tell me because did Elvis ever ring up your dad and say, "Listen, I'm going to close up the store. I'm going to come at eight o'clock at night, or I'm going to come midnight, and I want to come and buy stuff." Did he ever do anything like that? Yeah, plastic uh, plastic. That happened all the time. Um, you see that, see that photo right there. You know, Elvis, Elvis uh, you know, in the early days, and even after he got famous, he would come in the store after hours. Uh, but however, when he got real famous, we had to, we had to go out to Graceland. I, I took a lot of stuff out to, out to Graceland. And, uh, you know, Elvis, uh, he was a perfect customer because he, he, he kept it all and uh, he re-gifted a lot of stuff. Elvis was very generous, very generous. Show us a few more photos of that book there, because as you tell the story, having that imagery there is just like, it takes me back. Okay, Plastic, see this, see this photo right here? You know, this is, this is early 60s. This is right when, when Elvis got out of, the, uh, out of the army. Elvis would walk around the store, sign autographs, and if you were in the store, he would buy something. He would usually say, Mr. Lansky, put that on my tab. Mr. Lansky, put this one on my tab. And he, he would buy it. He did that in clothing stores. If he was at buying a Cadillac at uh, Southern Motors, he would he would buy you a Cadillac. That's how generous 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 he was. So let me see what else I got. Yeah, he, he, he was a gifter. Can I ask you when he bought shirts? Did he buy like 20, 30 at a time? No, early, early days he he didn't. But, but when we delivered stuff, he, he he kept everything. But you know, like I said, if he he was in a store with you know with a lot of the Memphis Mafia, and he would buy all them clothes and he, he was, you would ne never met a guy more generous than Elvis. He, he would give the shirt off your back. And, and many times he, he did, he did do that. So uh, let's see. Uh, um. I just want an idea, right? Can you tell me, did he rack up bills of like 10, $20,000 at a time? Oh, no, not really, you know, not really plastic. Cause, cause, uh, cause back, this is Elvis in the store, but you know, uh, back, back then, 
plastic. The clothes weren't that, you know, clothes weren't that expensive. I mean, he could have a great, a great shopping spree and it wasn't that much. Of course, I guess back then it was, but you know, nowadays these star, stars come in these stores and they spend 10 or 12, 15, 20,000 on, on three, three items, you know, uh, you know, it just, but no, it, you know, we, we, we have never, Lasky's, uh, we have never been a real expensive store. We, we are moderately, moderately priced and uh, we like to take care of the, the customers. You can, you can look, look good uh, leaving Lansky's for not a lot of money, but uh, you know, it depends. You know, some people think it's, it's expensive. Some people don't, but I think it's, we're moderately, moderately pl- priced. And uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Every day we get, we get tourists from all over the world coming into our store. They want to shop where Elvis shop that they want to walk on the sidewalks of Memphis. They want to breathe the air of Memphis. And uh, you know, it's just unbelievable. Uh, how people come to Memphis from all over the planet just to just to see where Elvis Elvis lived. You know, it's it's crazy. Have you ever heard the saying, "A man has no valor in his own country"? Well, we ha- we have people in Memphis that never been out to Graceland. It's 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 horrible. They've never been out to Graceland, but um, but it, it's unbelievable how people save their money for years and years, and when they when they get over here, they they love Memphis so much they don't want to leave. They want to they want to move here. So. Uh, so, so Hell, anyway, can I ask you, if you had an Elvis impersonator come in there and go, hey, dress me like Elvis, no expense spared? Plastic, we have that happen every day, but but I, I want to I correct you. Can I correct you for a minute? Please. Okay, you know, about five years ago, everybody quit using the term impersonator, Elvis impersonator. The new term is uh, ETA. Yeah. You know, they're called Elvis tribute artists. It's a little more, I guess, professional and that's that's what they are now. There's no more impersonators, but uh, but anyway, have, have you seen that new Elvis movie? Yeah, of course. Le- How many times? Yeah, producers Australian. Well, let me, let me tell you something, classic. Uh, in 2019, in September 2019, we have the we had the pl- privilege of hosting Boz Lerman, Austin Austin Butler, and a, a couple of days later, or a week or two later, uh, his um, Catherine Martin, his wife, came in, and we. We um, we uh, spent some time with them. We told you know told the story about the black and pink and the shirt for the shirts for the Milton Berle shirt. And I got to tell you, um, Boz did a terrific terrific job. And the the uh, the uh, state the set of Bill Street. Uh, everybody thought they were really in Bill Street. And Boz and his team did an awesome job in Australia. And it, it you know I, I I grew up on Bill Street, and it, they did an unbelievable job. That, that's yeah. unbelievable. These stories you're telling me are freaking me out. Show some more photos because it's so classic because I want people to go out there and buy the book as well. Okay, so you see this photo of the store? Um, yep. This, this, this sign was uh, throughout the movie, uh, Elvis movie. So they use this sign a lot. And uh, a lot of these photos in here, uh, they recreated Bill Street with it. And uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. Hang on a second. I know we're on time. All right, so so see this, see this coat right here. Yes. This, uh, this plaid coat. Okay. This this is Elvis being inducted into um, the, the service, United States Army, and this is the same coat uh, Elvis wore in his first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. It's unbelievable because back then, you know, the, the stars, the, the singers and stuff, they wore stuff, you know, a lot of times. You know, nowadays a star. Or wear something one 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 time and they'll end up in a hard rock cafe somewhere around the world. But Elvis wore his clothes, you know, because he didn't have a lot of clothes. But he, he wore this to, to get inducted into the United States Army. He wore the same coat he wore on the Ed Sullivan show. It, it's just unbelievable. But uh, hey, we uh, you ever heard of um, uh, an actor called Antonio Anthony La Paglia? Go ahead. He's Australian, okay. isn't he? Yes. Anyway. anyway he came, to, he came to Memphis and uh, my daughter and I, Julie, spent a day with him and went out to dinner with him. And he was, he was supposed to play, play my dad in, in the Elvis movie. And uh, so uh, we met with him in uh, sep- September of 2019. And then and we, got, we spent a lot of time with him. You know, my dad was, uh, was, was a king of job. My dad had more sayings than anybody. You know, you're cool in the pool, man. Who, who dressed you, Ray Charles? Uh, you know, uh, um, you know, he just, he just kept, came on, uh, um, the mirror's looking at you and the streets want you, you know, he just kept coming at you and kept, kept coming at you. And so we were trying to explain, um, explain these terms, uh, Anthony LaPaglia and, 
and finally he understand him. So uh, anyway, so in March, um, March, um, Anthony uh, called me. He said, "Hal, I have some bad news for you. This is when COVID hit." He said, "Hal, I've, I've been, I've been canned. I'm not, be, I'm not going to play your dad in the movie." So at, at that time, I thought the air in my tires was like let out. I was really disappointed. I said, "Okay, Anthony." And Anthony said, um, "Boz will have somebody, or call you, will have somebody call you and, and explain what's going on." So uh, I think I got an email from one of Boz's assistants. And said, "Sorry, we had to." Make changes due to to due to uh, the COVID, and he said, "But but I tell you what, I'm going to make it up to you. You know, when somebody tells you they're going to take care of you, you, you don't know if they are or not. So uh, so uh, my daughter and I and my family went to the screening, the Elvis screening. Of course, uh, um, Boz was there, and uh, Tom Hanks was there, and Austin Butler was there, and so we were watching the movie, and we didn't know if if Lansky's was going to get any kind of play in this movie. And my God, when that movie started, you know, when it was in started playing, I guess, first 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Man, they, they played so much of Lansky's in the store and the signs and stuff. At that time, I, I, I said to my daughter, you know what, Boz, he really did take care of us. He didn't, for, he didn't forget us. So, uh, you know, at, at that time, when I saw, when, when the Lansky name came up on the screen, I knew that my daughter and I uh, have cemented the uh, lasting legacy of my dad uh, with his contribution to Elvis Presley. And it, it was so emotional for us. Uh, uh, people in the theater were, were clapping and, and you know hollering that our name was up there. It made, made me real, real, feel, real, feel real good. So my daughter and I, we each sleep and breathe the Elvis uh, Bernard Lansky legacy. And we do this every day. We like to meet, we like to greet the people. Um, I like to personally take care of people in the store. You know, people come in the store uh, plastic, and they can't believe that I'm waiting on them. They can't believe that my daughter's waiting on them. They can't believe they shook the hand, they shook the hand, they shook the world. You know what I mean? I it's can't wait to come to Memphis, because if I come to Memphis, I'm coming with my wife. I'm going to come and see her and take you out okay. for lunch. That, that'll be good. And dinner, man. Don't forget dinner, man. We'll eat some peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, you know, we, we, we enjoy what we do. Uh, we have a lot of fun and we like, we're kind of like goodwill ambassadors uh, to the Elvis fans for all the world. You know, we treat everybody with respect. And although our legacy was created with one man, this one man was Elvis Presley. We cherish every customer comes in there because, you know, we treat everybody the same. And, uh, you know, Elvis started out as a nobody and uh, you wouldn't believe how, how, how many letters and emails we get of people saying how or how or the Lansky team has, has really taken good care of us, you know. You don't have to buy everything out. You don't have to buy anything. Just come in and, and talk. And if we can get you in the store, you'll probably leave with something, though, plastic. Yeah. I think it's unbelievable. The Lansky Brothers is like, it just runs hand in hand with Elvis in the Elvis story. It's like right. so big. you got to be so proud of your name, of your dad, of your uncle. And now that you're still going, it's like it's just a worldwide amazing story. Right. You know, uh, plastic, uh, my, like I said earlier, my my daughter and I eat, sleep, and breathe Elvis Presley. So I have two other daughters. So when we went to the premiere, of course, my wife went, my two other daughters, and, uh, and uh, I took a niece of mine to the, to the screening. They could, they could care less about Elvis Presley. But after they saw that movie, they kept asking questions, and they're into it now. So it's bringing a new, younger generation into the fold. And after we're long gone, Elvis Presley will still be out there. You know, it's like, you know, Beethoven, Mozart, they've been around a couple hundred years, but but Elvis is gonna be around much longer than, than we will ever imagine. Now, I gotta tell you, Elvis Presley is the number one artist in the world. And I gotta tell you, it's very hard not being four guys in a band. That's easier than being one individual. Right. But Elvis had one of the greatest voices and his voice never failed him. And the guy was the best looking dude out there. It's like two different things. Without Elvis, there wouldn't be the Beatles. And that's exactly. a fact. Exactly. We, we hear that every day. And uh, like I said, people come to Memphis to, they wanna, they wanna experience the Memphis, uh, the Southern ex hospitality. You know, uh, Elvis was a Southern gentleman. He, he was a practical joker. He, 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 was, he respected everybody. He, he signed autographs. Uh, he shook hands and uh, he was very, very polite. You know, he, like I said, he was a Southern gentleman. His, his parents raised him right. Yes, sir. No, sir. He had respect for everybody. He, he took time for everybody. And a, a, a quick story is 
uh, one day he was in a store and my dad said to Elvis, Elvis, do me a favor. Don't call me Mr. Lansky. Don't call me Mr. Lansky. Call me Bernard. And Elvis, my dad said, Elvis looked up with a shit eating grin. He said, yes, sir, Mr. Lansky. So he was, that's the way he was programmed. He, 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 he loved, he loved that. He had Southern, you know, manners. Can I ask you, yeah. do you ever remember him bringing his cars in front of the store? And what yes. cars were they? Okay, yeah, let me, let me tell you a, a quick story. Um, so, you know, my dad knew Elvis Presley when he was, he was poor, he didn't have anything. So when, when Elvis Presley sold his first million records with RCA Victor, Elvis drove the, uh, they gave him a German Messerschmitt, okay? So the German Messerschmitt, he came up to my dad's store, he said, Mr. Lasky, Mr. Lasky, look at this car, look at this car. Well, uh, RCA just gave it to me for selling a million, a million records. And Elvis was so proud that he wanted to show Mr. Lansky that he finally made it. So my dad said to him, Elvis, I love that car. I want that car when you're finished with it. And within a month later, Elvis traded that car to my dad for a two and a half hour shopping spree. So if you go to our website, um, www.lanskybros.com, somewhere in the history section, you can hear Elvis talking about, hey, yeah. I traded my car to this guy in Memphis. He had the best store in Memphis, Tennessee. I, I, I traded my car for a two and a half hour shopping spree. And when I left that store, man, that store was a wreck. So uh, I've got to say that that Messerschmitt is a little funny, little tiny car where one person gets in and the door closes at the front. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a car right there. You can see that's it? right. Hold that up. That's a funny looking car. Yeah, yeah, it was a Messerschmitt, you know, in uh, World War II, uh, it was a German car, and of course, RCA is a German company. Uh, the Messerschmitts, they made those uh, fighter planes, and <laughs> after the war, they had, to, they had to do something, so they started making these uh, three-wheel cars, just like a motorcycle with a top on it, yeah. But, uh, but it was, that car was featured in, in the movie, but... Uh, yeah, that's right. But, but it, I it saw was, them uh, driving it around the grounds in the movie. Now, let right. me tell you, did he ever come up there with his Cadillacs? Like, I want to know his cars now and your store. Can you give me yeah. the cars that arrived? Yes, you know, he, he did. You know, he had the Stutz, Stutz Blackhawk and he had the, the Lincolns and all that. But, you know, when after he really got famous, uh, he, he came at night and stuff. And uh, I really wasn't, wasn't around. But, uh, but you yeah, know, he came at night or we delivered out, out to the uh, out to the. Uh, house out to the mansion but you know Elvis had a fleet of motorcycles he, he, he would come around in, on motorcycles too so you never know how he'd ride he had a he had an old truck uh, out of Grayson that he rode it and nobody even knew it was a beat up truck nobody knew it was Elvis in that car so he, he liked to he, he was like he was a night owl he, he would get out at night he, he was he was like a, a bat he'd come out at night he just loved he loved to go out at night he loved have you got a story of when you went to Graceland to deliver clothes have you got a story that stands out Yes, yes, I do. I do. So, so this was, uh, you know, I, I drove out to Grayson and of course, every time I took uh, Elvis stuff, you know, he, he was a, he was the perfect customer. He never returned nothing. He, 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 he kept it or regifted. So one, one day, um, let me uh, get a little water here. So uh, here, go for it. One day, this was in, in the seventies. This is, you know, the decade of fashion that, I, I, that sucked, you know, it's, it was the worst, you know, everybody thought there were pimps. And, uh, you know, at that time, in the early 70s, the movie came out, Superfly and Shaft. You know, it's all the, all the black uh, exploitation movies that uh, came out. So this is probably 72 or 73. I, I went in there and uh, I went up to, you know, the, they let me in the gates of grace and those fabulous grates, the ornamental iron gates. So, so I, I, I knocked on the door and all of a sudden it, it was like magic. It's like magic. The door opened. I don't, I'm sure somebody let me in, but I didn't see anybody left in. So I walked in and had all my packages and stuff. Next thing I knew, Elvis was top, uh, the top of the steps and he was walking down, but like every step he took, it was like eternity. Like it was like three minutes for every step. So, so, and he had, he had, he had a robe on and uh, he looked good and he, he had his uh, right hand in his pocket. So he's walking down steps. I didn't know what he had on in his what he had his hand on so when he got closer down the steps i noticed he had a pistol you know a little derringer and uh, so i said oh my god so so he kept down and and he was so happy to i don't think he was happy to see me but he was happy to see the clothes because at that time um i, I got a, a coat 
and I put it on them. It was, I think it was like a, um, a, an orange coat, you know, it was orange, you know, a, a, a gaudy orange coat with a mink collar on it. And the, we had the matching hat, had to, uh, had to match it. And he put it on, he put the, put the collar up, cocked the hat on. And have you ever been to Graceland? Plastic? No, I haven't yet. Sorry, unfortunately. Okay. So, so if you go in the front door of Graceland, right at the steps are right there. So we got down to the bottom steps, trying stuff for him. And to the, to the left, as you come in, it's the dual dining room. So he, he, he walked in the dining room and then, then he swung open the doors and, you know, he had his cooks back there and he said, Hey, look, look at me, look at me. And if I tell you what he said, I'd have to kill you because it's not, it's not really politically correct during this time. But uh, anyway, now, it was like, that's, a, a, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Now I've got to ask you with the Memphis mafia, did he ever come in with all the Memphis Mafia and just buy at the shop a few times, or was that regular stuff as you got more famous? No, he 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 was he was with the Memphis Mafia all the time. I mean, uh, Alan Fortas, George Klein, um, uh, Red West, uh, Lamar Fight, uh, Marty Lacker. I mean, they they were they were a group, you know, they were a group. But uh, if they wanted something, he would buy it, buy it for them. It's it's not a problem. You know, it's like like. Um, Elvis, when, when he bought a Coke, he bought about 10 Cokes. You know, if, if somebody wanted Coke, because, you know, it's like, uh, um, I hate to say this, but it was, um, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a mob. It was a mob. And, uh, um, you know, that's what he liked. He liked uh, being around people, but uh, it was a lot of people. But if they wanted something, they, they got it, yeah. i got to say, when he was making movies and he went back to Memphis, he must have missed your store and your dad. Well, you know, I would like to think so. And uh, of course, uh, we sent out stuff out out to California a lot. And uh, you know, he was our he was our best an ambassador. You know, a lot of times they ask Elvis, Elvis, where do you get your clothes? And he say uh, at Lansky's on Famous Bill Street. You know, he 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 loved to uh, you know give us shout outs all the time. He'd be on the stage and uh, he would he'd be talking about his suits. It's unbelievable. You know, I want you to go through. I want you to tell everybody around the world. Your actual address now, where you are, your opening time. So when people come there, they can come and say hello to you and your daughter or your other daughter. Just tell everybody exactly where you are there for people that have never come to Memphis. Okay, thank you for the opportunity, Classic. Okay, so we're in the in the um, the famous Peabody Hotel. This is the South Grand Hotel. It was built in 1925. And it's just a simply beautiful hotel. We're known for the Peabody Ducks. We have ducks that are on the top of the building. They come down at 11 in the morning and stay till five and they go back up at five o'clock. They roll out the red carpet. So you could Google Peabody Ducks and we're right next to the duck fountain. We're right in the middle of the lobby. We're next to elevators. I like to tell everybody we're just a waddle away from the famous Peabody Ducks. This hotel is known throughout the world and, uh, you know, they, they bring a lot of customers in. However, a lot of people come in to see the Lanskys too. So it's, a, it's, it's great. So, uh, um, it's, and, and here again, our website is lanskybros.com. And uh, we got a great website. We got a history on there. We have, uh, you know, you asked me earlier who shops with us. We have a, lot, we have a celebrity sighting page in there. You can see, you can see uh, who's been in our store. And of course, earlier, um, Plastic, you asked me, um, you know, who, who my favorite uh, uh, entertainer is or a uh, uh, movie star or whatever. And what did I tell you? Once, once you met Elvis Presley, it's all downhill. I mean, there's nobody like him. You know, everybody tries to be like Elvis. And, you know, some of them look pretty good, but there's only one Elvis. Only one. Now, Hal, I want you to show the book again. I'm in love with the book. Seriously. Hold that up. Tell them where they can get it. Can they buy it direct from you? Where can they get that book? And do you sign it? Uh, yeah, we uh, we uh, I can definitely personalize it, but yeah, www.lansky l a n s k y b as a boy b r o s dot com b r o s. Yeah, we we send them out. We also have a a, a children's book, a children's uh, book as for children of all ages. How how my it, it's the name of our children's book is Come on in, young man. It's the story how my dad met Elvis. And, uh, but yeah, we uh, it's, it's beautifully uh, illustrated. It is like I said, it's for children. For all ages, and now with the, the new Boz Lerman movie, Elvis movie, uh, it's a perfect book to bring the next uh, generation into the Elvis fold. 
Like I Al, said, show me one more photo just for me out of the book that you haven't shown. Because as I said, I love the book. It's so historical. It's all there. All right. Hang on a second. Flipping the pages. All right, I showed you that one. I'm sure you'll find it. There's no rush. Okay, okay yeah, we got we got a lot of photos here. Okay, okay, I showed you that one. This this is an early photo. Uh, this is 1950s, uh, right late 50s when uh, we we are one of the first stores in America uh, to sell Elvis Presley merchandise. We've been selling Elvis Presley merch memorabilia for over 60 years. So this was a press conference in the 50s. Can you see that, Plastic? Yeah, you but I'm saying photo? I never knew that you sold Elvis merchandise. Just bring it down a fraction. What's okay? You see that? That's it. Stop there. That's perfect. I didn't know that you sold the merchandise. So what yep. year did you start and you're still selling it? Yeah, we're still selling. We've been selling it for over 60 years. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's unbelievable there. Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a fantastic photo. Yeah. Let's see what else to get. Yeah, yeah. You know, people want items. This was uh, his introduction of his first watches and stuff. Let's see something. You know, let me show you this. Um, you know, see that see this picture right here, plastic. Okay. Yep. You know, a lot of people think Lansky's it what started out as a carriage trade store, as a uh, 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 up the up. Uh, rich store. We started out. We were, we were, um, we were a urban store. We we were uh, so so close to African Americans. And you see how how cool these guys look. You know that's what brought Elvis on the Bill Street. Bill Street was an African American street. If you were if you were white, you my dad knew Elvis was out of place when he was walking down the street. But 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 Elvis loved the vibe, the music, the colorful windows uh of the street and that's what that's what what brought elvis into the i guess the african-american fold the african-american culture of course you know we've heard the debate that elvis steal the uh, african-americans music that's debatable but uh, he loved he loved the uh the culture he loved the the the, the, the party and, and of course i think boz did a great job portraying that in his movie but uh but but lansky's was an african-american store and you know your African Americans, they know how to dress. Uh, they they love the loud colors. My dad used to take his windows and he would put, he called them his lifesaver colors. You know, the lifesavers, you know, the little candy bar candy. Yeah, of course. My dad used to put red, red coats in there, yellow coats in there, green coats in there. And that's what attracted Elvis to the windows, the the, the bright colors. And, and of course, you know, the pimps, the the choir, the the preachers, the uh uh, the dandies, whatever you call them, they 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 like to dress. And and, and hey, quick question yeah. before we go, Hal, who's yeah. the biggest female celebrity ever come through your store? Well, here again, I mean they've all been in our store. You know, Jerry Lee, uh, Roy Orbison. Well, but one of my favorite is uh, Robert Plant with Led Zeppelin. He loves this this part of the country, the Delta. Uh, Robert Plant loves loves Memphis. You know, everybody loves Memphis because Elvis. You know. But got, oh, no, just give us a couple of female entertainers that have come through the store. Well, we had, um, oh my God. Uh, um, of course, Priscilla Presley shops with us all the time. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. We do get them, uh, plastic. Um, oh God. <laughs> don't uh, listen, you Hal. Me, you got me on the spot. You don't know who you're going to see in the Lansky stores. That's, that's it. There no, is, no, you it, don't know it, who it, you're going to see in the store. Never. It's never a dull day. Never, All right, never, listen, Hal. Yeah. So much. I salute you so much. The Lansky brothers' name is world famous. Everybody going to Memphis, make sure you go there. And I can assure you that Plastic EP and my wife, Vicky, will come and personally visit you, and I'll be taking you out for lunch when I come. That's not, you like you like barbecue, don't you? Oh, I love it. Okay, we, get, we got the best. Also, you know, we're the uh, home of Elvis Presley, but we're home of uh, blues and uh, barbecue also. <laughs> hey, i got to say, Hal, you're the greatest. Thanks so much for being on Thank the you. show. It made my week. Thank you. Thank you.